Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Bulkland. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint Madril, Captain of Elithium from the Battle for Osciliath box set. If you'd like to support me, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also my coffee and Patreon page is a link below. Now, onto the video. So this is the finished Madril miniature. Really impressed with how it turned out. Also really impressed with the miniature itself. The character models from the Battle for Osciliath are really, really nicely detailed. Loads of cool features on them for you to paint up. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Bane Blade Brown. This is going to be for any of the areas that are going to be brown on the miniature. So you've got his cape, you've got like the trim on his armour, a few other little areas there on his boots, on his chest, that you want to get that nice brown colour on. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Bugman's Glow. This is just to do a really quick layer on his face. Next, we're going to be using some Vallejo White. I'm just going to use this to paint up his hair, and if you need to touch up the column behind him as well, you can touch up that with a little bit of white too. Now we're using some Citadel Retributor armour. This just to do the grip of his sword, or the pommel and the little cross piece I can't remember the name of. Also the little kind of buckles and brooches on his belt and on his cloak too. I'm going to use some Citadel Lead Belcher. This is going to be to do the blade of his sword. And then you've got a couple of little belt buckles as well, but you can save them to the end if you want to, because you'll be probably painting over them when you try and do the leather, like I do. Next colour is going to be Citadel Contrast Wildwood. We're going to be using this to do his cloak, so we'll give that a nice layer of that. That'll give you a nice base of the nice brown colour and the darker shade in the recesses. It's a really, really quick way to do his cloak. I'll be doing some highlights shortly. Be using some Citadel Gore Grunt of Fur. I'm going to be using this to do the rest of the leather on him. So this will give that nice kind of reddy brown colour for the belt and the rest of his leather. Now we're going to be using some Citadel Nuln Oil, and this is going to be to shade the blade of his sword. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Avon Sunset to do the fletching on the arrows. Then we're going to do some Citadel Apothecary White Contrast. This is going to be to do the rock from the ruins behind them. They'll be doing a little bit of a tutorial on painting up the Osciliath scenery in the coming weeks. It's a really, really quick method that I've uh, played about with quite a bit. So I'll get that up as soon as I can.
Now time for a little bit of Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade, just to get his face done. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Grax Earth Shade. This is just going to be to do the gold, which we've painted onto the miniature. Finally, a little bit of Citadel Fugan Orange. This is going to be to paint the fletching on his arrows. Now returning to the face, we're going to use Citadel Bugman's Glow to reapply some of that colour back to his skin. And when you're painting this on, remember to leave the shade in the recesses. Now I'm going to add a little bit of Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone to the Bugman's Glow. I'm going to start highlighting the skin. So think about where the light's going to be coming from. The light's going to be coming from above. So the top surfaces of his skin where you've got those ridges are going to have the lighter highlights. So make sure you get those cheeks, his nose and those kind of areas highlighted with this colour. Now we're going to add a little bit more Cadian Flesh Tone to the previous mix. We're going to do some final highlights on the skin. So picking out those details in the areas that be getting that extra bit of light. So you've got some little bumps on his like jowly bits by his mouth there. You've got his cheek, his lips, his nose and a few little bits on his head too. So now I'm going to paint the hair and the eyes now. So when you're painting the eyes, you want to get a little bit of paint on a very thin brush, drag the brush away from the nose so that you get a nice straight line there. And on the hair, you're just going to be picking out the details and painting it so it's almost like wavy. So where those waves are, you're going to add a little bit more paint onto those areas so that they stand out a little bit more. Using a little bit of Citadel Mournfang Brown, you're going to start to add some colour back to the areas where you use the Gorgrunter fur. That is a pretty good colour, this because it blends in quite well with Gorgrunter on top of Bane Blade. So you can add this and this will add another layer of colour to that. Again, think about where the light's going to be hitting it and painting those raised sections rather than the recesses. You want to leave the gore grunter in those recesses. Now we are going to use a little bit of Citadel XV88, mix that with the Mornfang Brown. And we're going to do some highlights on those areas that we put the Mornfang Brown on. Probably about 50% of the area covered with Mornfang you want to be adding this to. And also picking out the details with it too. Thinking about where the light is going to catch those sections. Now we're going to use some plain XV88 really, really thinly just to do some edge highlights on those details that will be catching the light. Very quick layer this one, dead easy to get that leather looking really, really good. I'm going to go for Citadel Thondia Brown, and this is going to be to add a little bit of colour to that wildwood on the cloak. So you want to be thinking about where the light is going to be showing up most on the cloak and building up the Thondia Brown there. So you're leaving the shade in the recesses and then the darker area of the wildwood, then the Thondia Brown.
Now we're going to add a little bit of Citadel XV88 to the Thondia Brown, and this will lighten that up nicely and give us a nice highlight shade to do the cloak. So you want to be painting this on the areas where you painted the Thondia Brown, maybe about 50% of the same area, so at the very top of those crests, so you get that nice highlight and all the different colours showing through there. Next highlight we're going to use a little bit more Citadel XV88 mixed in with the previous mix and this is going to be to do a final highlight mainly on the edges and a few little bits here and there on the cloak just to make those little scuffs and scratches stand out. So now we're going to use Vallejo Black. This is going to be to paint all of the armour and his clothes which we haven't painted already and his boots. So what you want to do is just be very careful, use a nice thin brush to get around those edges so that you don't blot out any of the colours you've already done. Also you want to do two little spots in his eyes and they will be the final parts for the black. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of Citadel Deathcore Drab with the black. And then we're going to start highlighting the black clothing. A bit of dodgy camera work on this, but apologies for that. But basically the same as you would have done with his cloak and with the details. The areas that be catching the most light and standing out with the details and stuff. The creases, you want to be highlighting those with this mix. Should add you want to leave his gloves and his boots and also the bow on his back. Just plain black for now, and we'll be coming back to them in a bit. Now we're going to add a little bit more Deathcore Drab to the previous mix, and just do a smaller, thinner highlight on those areas to make those stand out that little bit more. Final highlight, we're going to use a little tiny bit of pure Deathcore Drab just to do some final little edge highlights to pick out those details and make those stand out nice and sharp. On the boots, gloves and bow, we're going to use a little bit of German grey to highlight that black. So again, think about where the light's coming down onto the miniature. Pick out those areas with the German grey to highlight. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Mechanica Standard Grey from Citadel just to do the final highlight on those black sections that we've left. Just pick out the details to make those stand out and give them their kind of final edge highlight. Now I'm going to return to Citadel Retributor Armour. I'm going to use this to highlight the gold again. So leave the shade in the recesses and just pick out the areas that will be catching the light. 
and add in a little bit of retributor armor to that you should get that nice shade in the recesses and the shine on the gold to highlight the retributor armor we're going to use a little bit of citadel liberator gold we're just going to do about 50 percent of the area that we did with the retributor armor and just use that as the first highlight Final highlight is going to be Vallejo Model Air Chrome. Just going to mix that with the Liberator Gold, and then we're just going to do this as an edge highlight, just to show the edges where it will be catching the most light. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Lead Belcher just to pick out those thin buckles that he's got on his belt. We're also going to use this for the sword as well. He's got like a little ridge running down the sword, so you want to get the edges of the blade, the ridge is going down the middle, and try and leave a little bit of that shade running between the edge and that ridge. You can achieve that by doing a little bit of kind of sideways painting, as it were. Get a little bit of paint on the brush, brush the worst of it off, and then just slide that along the length of the blade, getting over those ridges that you want, and it should leave the recesses nicely shaded. So we're going to work on this back part now. Use a really little amount of seraphim sepia, you want to have enough on the brush that you can paint with it, but you don't want it too thick, you don't want to let it pool anywhere, just use it to discolour that stonework. If you do this in the areas where maybe dust and grime would collect, you can do that ever so lightly in those areas. If you see a few little bits every now and again I'll put on, you can tell where it's gone on too heavy because it looks really, really dark. So try and avoid that if you can. With the base stone colours on, we're now going to recolour it. I'm going to use some Vallejo white to lightly paint on these areas again. I start painting with a brush and then think, you know, just use a dry brush because it's going to be a lot easier and a lot quicker. So I'm gently brushing that on, sort of between a wet brush and a dry brush, I suppose, just to get that colour back on there, avoiding all those little recesses. I'm not doing it too smooth either. It is quite patchy. You want to have that kind of not 100% coverage when you paint it so you get that nice stone look to it as though it's not 100% white all over. White on, we're now going to use a little bit of Citadel Agrax Air Shade and we are going to gently discolour the bottom, the same way you did with the Seraphim Sepia. You can use this a little bit heavier if you want and it's just to kind of put dirt and stuff around the bottom of that. I realise here that I've not painted the white onto the stone at the front there so what I'm doing is I'm painting around all the areas where that would go and then I'll add the white in a little bit that's not too much of a problem we add that around the base and that makes it look like there's dirt splashing up and dampness coming up from the ground I'm now going to use some Athonian camo shade you want to get some of this on the brush and then you're dragging the brush downwards so you don't get any of that pooling and what that'll do by dragging it down is leave you with thicker green at the bottom and a thinner discoloration to make it look like there's a bit of maybe mould or mildew or damp climbing up that brickwork from the ground. And once you've finished that, that should look really, really cool. The vinyl colour I'm going to use is Citadel Uriel Yellow, and I'm just going to use this to do the fletching on the arrows, using a really thin brush here. I think it's the Citadel Small Layer Brush. It's got a really good point, so I'm using that just to do all the little details on the fletching. And once I've finished this, I'm just going to do off camera a little bit of black for the little notch at the top of the arrow too. That Madrill is complete. Really, really cool miniature. Very dynamic. Really love the terrain and the bit of room behind him too. So all in all, very happy with the result. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have, please give it a like, comment and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to our other social media, link below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel and also my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.